happening now. The latest on a fire that leveled a home and damaged several others along Chautauqua Lake. Plus, new details about Governor Andrew Cuomo's alleged behavior amid a sexual harassment probe. Well, a few afternoon showers are going to be coming our way today and especially tonight. And then temperatures, big change by the weekend. We'll talk about it in detail next as the news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. I'm Justin Gould. New details about the latest allegation lodged against New York's governor allege he groped a female aide late last year. The Albany Times Union reports a female staffer who was not further identified by the newspaper alleges Governor Cuomo reached under her blouse and began to fondle her while they were alone in the governor's mansion late last year. The woman was reportedly asked to the mansion to help Cuomo with a technical issue on his cell phone. The governor denies the allegations in a statement last night calling it, quote, gut-wrenching. The Associated Press is reporting that nearly 30 Democrats in the state assembly are calling for the governor to resign. Well, starting next month, those who travel out of state will no longer be required to quarantine upon returning. New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo announced that this morning, saying the change in policy impacts domestic travelers entering the state from another or U.S. territory starting April 1st. However, the New York State Department of Health continues to recommend quarantine after domestic travel as an added precaution. Domestic travelers will be required to complete a traveler health form, and individuals are encouraged to follow all safety guidelines, including mask wearing, social distancing, and avoiding gatherings. Additionally, mandatory quarantine will be required for international travelers. While well, help is on the way for many Americans struggling during the coronavirus pandemic, the massive $1.9 trillion relief plan has made it through Congress. As Karen Kafer reports, this massive bill passed on the eve of the official start of the global pandemic. We say to America, help is on the way. Help is on the way. You will receive $1,400 checks by the end of March. With their signatures, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer officially mark the $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan's passage through Congress, despite not receiving a single vote from Republicans in the House or the Senate. On this vote, the yeas are 220, the nays are 211. The motion is adopted. The bill now heads to President Joe Biden's desk for signing. I look forward to signing it later this week. Everything in the American Rescue Plan addresses a real need, including investments to fund our entire vaccination effort. Biden plans to appoint someone to oversee the implementation of the rescue plan. They are uh, looking for ways to maximize, of course, the impact of every dollar. Now, on the eve of marking one year since the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic, the president is previewing his address to the nation Thursday night. And what's next in the country's battle against the pandemic? I'm going to launch the next phase of the COVID response and explain what we will do as a government and what we will ask of the American people. There is light at the end of this dark tunnel in the past year. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. Karen, thank you. During the address tonight, President Biden says he'll talk about what we've been through as a nation, but more importantly, what comes next. A large fire along Chautauqua Lake has destroyed two homes and damaged several others. Multiple fire departments were dispatched at Keller Road near the Asheville Bay Marina early this morning. Two homes were destroyed and several other damaged by flames around 2 a.m. Lakewood Fire Chief Kurt Holberg tells us that seven other properties were impacted but aren't heavily damaged. Residents are still addressing in that damage now. Holberg explains two people living in one of the houses heard the crackling of the fire. Two people that were in the house, it's a total loss here behind me, and they happened to have the windows open because of the warm temperatures and they heard the crackling and saw the glow and they were able to self-extricate from the house, which was fortunate that it was warm last night. 
The chief says no one was in the home that was destroyed. One firefighter was taken to UPMC Chautauqua Hospital for dehydration, though. The Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office fire investigation team is now looking into the cause. Other de departments were dispatched, including Asheville, Busti, Celeron, and Cayenne Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we get a check of uh, some local news headlines on this Thursday afternoon. Uh, great to see Linda. Good to see Rita Barb. Uh, uh, Joseph, Puma, and Butch as well. Hopefully you all are having a great day. We appreciate you uh, tuning into the broadcast. And today, one of the big things that uh, everybody's keeping their eye on is the weather forecast. Absolutely beautiful out there. Let's get a check of it now with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. Hi, Dakota. Happy Thursday to you. Happy Thursday, everybody. We are so close to that end of the week. Just one more day and then we're at the weekend. This is a live look at the uh, radar. And uh, you can see here that we've had just a few of those showers that kind of move through, especially the uh, northeastern part of Cattaraugus County. And this is a live look over uh, the uh, Lakeside Park. And you can see some of the clouds uh, around as well. But it's 63 already at Lakeside Park. And as we zoom the radar out, you'll actually see that there's more rain on the way. This is in association out ahead of the cold front that moves through tonight and tomorrow and that cold front's going to usher in a big change to our temperatures over the weekend we managed 63 at the jamestown airport we should do better than that today uh, we bottomed out at uh, 54 this morning 69 and three below zero are the record highs and lows for this day so uh, through the afternoon warm and windy scattered afternoon rain showers are going to be developing more uh, later this evening and there could be some peaks of sunshine later this afternoon we actually have some of that right now 64 in the inland areas to 72 near the Lake Erie shoreline. Yes, with a southwest wind 15 to 25 miles per hour. We've got, a, we've got uh, one more day of sunshine tomorrow, then it's downhill from here. We'll tell you about it with that 42 degrees and sunny seven-day forecast later in the shoe. All right, Dakota, we're certainly going to take the spring when we can get mm -hmm. it anyways. Thank you. Well, the Jamestown man is behind bars after allegedly shooting a stolen pistol on a city street overnight. Jamestown police say Bless Grant fired a single round from a handgun in the area of 45 Franklin Street just after midnight. Police say the shot was discharged in close proximity to multiple occupied homes. Grant was taken into custody a short distance away from the scene where officers allegedly located the stolen weapon in his possession. Officers say he was taken to Jamestown City Jail without incident. And a Jamestown man was indicted yesterday on multiple federal charges related to child pornography. The U.S. Attorney's Office tells us that 34-year-old Richard LaFrance is charged with incitement production of child pornography and committing certain crimes where required to register as a sex offender. Officials say the man began communicating via email and text with a 14-year-old in April 2019. He then allegedly asked the victim to send him naked pics. He also allegedly asked that Vic on at least two occasions to have sex with him. LaFrance was convicted in Oregon on two counts of rape and a count of sexual abuse back in 2016, resulting in him as a level three sex offender. He was arraigned and detained yesterday. Officials say LaFrance faces a minimum sentence of 45 years in prison. Next, an update on a fatal plane crash that happened here in Chautauqua County last year. And later, good news for avid sportsmen. What the state DEC has to say about bringing back in-person hunting classes. Stay with us as we soak up the sun on this Thursday afternoon. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. 
EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. Honest John says what you're looking for. When you want it good, we're gonna give you lots more. From freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has what you're looking for. And now two great locations, East 2nd Street and Fairmount Avenue. Order takeout or delivery today online at honestjohns.pizza. You're gonna get it good at Honest John's. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. A preliminary report from the National Transportation Safety Board says the pilot of a plane that crashed near the Chautauqua County Airport in November mentioned snow and turbulence just before the plane went down. The report says that the pilot, Alan Fuller, did not report ice accumulation, which Fuller and the pilot's instructor reportedly discussed after it being a possibility prior to the flight accident. The flight instructor says that the weather that night was conductive to be icy. Radar contact was lost about a mile and a half northeast of the airport. No further communications received from the plane at that point. A witness who was in a tree stand to hunt reportedly heard a loud engine noise for about 10 to 15 seconds followed by complete silence, but couldn't see well due to the wind and snow. That witness also reportedly did not hear the plane initially. Fuller, Valerie Holmes, and Linda Edwards all died in the crash. A wadded Erie, Pennsylvania woman is in police custody following a traffic stop by New York State Police on I-86 near Sherman. Troopers say 31-year-old Nicole Fox was wanted for DUI and weapons charges. Fox, a 27-year-old Mackenzie McTosh, and 48-year-old Timothy Dominic were pulled over for an alleged seatbelt violation Monday. Troopers allege drug paraphernalia was spotted in plain view. Following a more in-depth look, police say they recovered two bags of meth, two bags of coke, and other drugs. During the traffic stop, troopers alleged Fox provided a false name. However, subsequent investigation revealed her true identity. The three were placed under arrest and processed at the Jamestown Police Barracks. Fox was taken to county jail pending extradition. Well, according to the American Lung Association, more than a half a million Americans living today have been diagnosed with lung cancer at some point in their life. And now there's new guidance on lung cancer screening here in the U.S., suggesting current and former smokers should get checked every year at an earlier age. Mandy Gaither with more in today's Health Minute for us. When it comes to lung cancer, early detection is key. Lung cancer screening legitimately saves lives. And now there are new recommendations on who should be screened. The new guidance published in the medical journal JAMA now suggests current and former smokers between the ages of 50 to 80 who have a 20-pack year smoking history should get screened for lung cancer with a CT scan every year. Anything that expands uh, the eligibility uh, criteria to get more and more people screened for lung cancer 
uh, in my opinion, is, is obviously a, a good thing. Dr. Michael Ward is director of the Lung Cancer Screening Program at the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, James Cancer Hospital, and Solov Research Institute. He's in favor of the expanded eligibility that says more people need to be aware that annual lung cancer screenings exist. Maybe three to five percent of eligible patients uh, for screening are actually getting screened, which is inexcusable, in my opinion, especially when you have something is is low risk and potentially high reward uh, as this. Dr. Wirtz says a vast majority of lung cancers are diagnosed after symptoms start when the cancer is harder to treat. The point of screening to catch these cancers when they're very small, uh, not advanced and can actually be removed with a surgery. Anyone who might be a candidate for a lung cancer screening should reach out to their doctor. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. The guidelines replace the older ones which recommended lung cancer screening to begin at age 55 in people who have a 30-pack a year history and either currently smoke or quit within the last 15 years. Well, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation will soon resume in-person hunting education classes. Starting April 1, the DEC says they plan to resume the courses in limited capacity with online classes still available. Hunter safety courses went online only during the pandemic. Now, during the same time frame, the DEC says it has seen a 12% increase in hunting and fishing, fishing license sales compared to the previous 12-month period. The volunteered staff in-person courses are offered in hunting, bow hunting, trapper, and waterfowl hunting education. Registration is required and all in-person courses include mandatory homework that must be completed before the class gets underway. Classes start at 19.95 and are also available. Certainly uh, pretty exciting for a lot of avid sports people who, who really want to get out to the woods. And I think that's one of the big things that uh, we saw during the pandemic anyways is more people maybe getting in tune with their inner nature. Let us know what you think about that more in the comments down below. Great to see uh, Rita. Good to see Bill, Brandy, uh, uh, Ron, and Pam as well. Hopefully you're all having a good day. We appreciate you uh, tuning in here on the uh, Book of Faceland. Let us know uh, what you think about these and more. And uh, Dakota, I think that's one of the big things, especially during last summer when we still really couldn't go out like mm -hmm. we used to. You know, a lot of people weren't going out on a night on the town, so... Maybe a well, night in the woods. Do. So why not? Nobody else is out there. It's nice and safe. That's right. That's probably and, why they saw the increase. Right. And, you know, I was able to get out a couple of times and golf last summer. Yeah. And, of course, you know, a, you know, after the golf courses opened up, they had strict rules like, you know, everybody has to have a, had to have a separate car. You have to make a tee time. You can't just show up and be like, I want right. to play 18. You actually have to make a tee time reservation and, and all that stuff. So it was a little bit more convoluted. But, I mean, at least we were able to get out, enjoy yeah. ourselves, and uh, enjoy some of the warmer weather that we had, um, you know, last summer. And, uh, you know. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people are doing today, too, and especially last night. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely beautiful it was a windows open kind of night for sure. yes it was i mean our windows were open last night and how about this shot in dunkirk miss il sending this shot into us and boy you can see some of the ice that is near the break wall in dunkirk and how about the city lights in Dunkirk. That is a fantastic shot. This actually might become my new desktop wallpaper yeah, on my computer, uh, come to think of it. Uh, so if you have any pictures or videos of the weather, Hunters WX on Twitter, the First Defense weather page on Facebook, and always use that hashtag MyLocalWX. And as we mentioned during first weather, it was warm yesterday. 63 was the official high here in the city of Jamestown. It wasn't a record breaker. The record for yesterday uh, is uh, 73 set back in 2016, but who cares that we didn't break the record? It was was warm and we've got another day of that coming so with all the warm weather it got us thinking what are the most snowiest the uh, most uh, snowstorms or at least the latest snowstorms in the year so we looked back at all the records fast accurate and every day first defense weather 
All right, and it was a nice night last night. How about this shot over uh, the Dunkirk Pier? And you can see some of the uh, ice accumulation near the break wall as well. Miss IL sending this shot into us. And, you know, this might become my new desktop wallpaper on my computer. I mean, it was just so fantastic. So if you have any pictures or videos of the weather, Hunters WX on Twitter, the First Defense Weather page on Facebook, and always make sure you use that hashtag, MyLocalWX. And as we mentioned during First Weather, it was a warm day yesterday, 63 here in the city of Jamestown. Now the record for yesterday is 73, set back in 19 didn't break the record, but who cares? It was warm, and uh, we have another warm day coming up today. And uh, so with all the warm weather, it kind of got us thinking, what are the latest snowstorms we've had dating back from March 15th onward? Well, the most uh, well, uh, the most amount of snow we had was on 317 of, uh, of uh, 1936, where we had 23 inches of snow. The latest ever was on 420, 1901, where we had 16.5 inches of snow, and more recently, 15 inches in 1993. So it has happened before. We've had late season snowstorms, but they don't happen often. That's the good news. Lots of sunshine uh, from the HD News Now Cam downtown. 63 as a noon hour, so we're at our forecast. So we're actually at the high from yesterday uh, with a southwest wind to 17, wind gust to 27. So it is windy out there, but man, soak up the sunshine while we have it. So the radar shows you not a whole lot across the area right now, but this is the leading edge of the precipitation that's now across the Niagara Peninsula. And as we put the uh, satellite and radar composite on, this is the game changer that's going to be coming in on Friday. This is the cold front that's going to knock the temperatures down over the weekend. So enjoy the warmth while we have it. So uh, here we go with a future scan and it paints the idea of mostly sunny through the afternoon and then the clouds will thicken up with rain showers developing later this afternoon into this evening where you see the darker colors, the reds and uh, the uh, oranges here. That could indicate some downpours, especially this evening. And there could be a couple rumbles of thunder uh, within this. It clears out later tonight. Tomorrow will be a fantastic day with lots of sunshine. And then as we go into the later part of Friday, a few more clouds are going to be returning and uh, uh, especially through the day on Saturday. We'll see a mix of sun and clouds through the day on Saturday. So it's going to be a fantastic weekend, although chilly. So the zone forecast inland areas, this is going to be the cooler spot today. Relative speaking, yeah, about 63, maybe in more than 65 here in town. But this is above average by about 20 degrees. Enjoy it. Next seven days of your life coming up right now, brought to you by 42 degrees of sunny, 50 tomorrow. The sun is back, 37 on Saturday after that cold front. Time change, by the way, 2 a.m. Sunday morning, so set the clocks back uh, as you head to bed Saturday. High pressure continues through all the way until Tuesday. We get into a chance for a few mixed in snow showers with temperatures right around where they should be for this time of the year. We'll take a break and be right back. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny, smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. It's not just what we say, it's what we do. Local first, it isn't just our slogan, it's our mindset every single day. So whether you're watching our daily live streams or staying up to date with reports on our website and mobile app, you'll always see the same attention to detail from reporters who passionately care about our community, who have one goal in mind, to always put the facts first. For me, it's more than just getting the forecast right. What I love the most about my job is that I come into work every day to help break down the weather, letting people know how this is going to impact their day. We take pride that First Defense Weather is the only local weather team in the southern tier. We don't just copy and paste our weather from outside sources. Every part of our forecast is handmade right here in-house, something our team really takes pride in. What matters to you matters to us. Every story, every day. WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. With coverage that matters, this is WNY News Now. 
Well, today is a day to celebrate an icon from American history. It's National Johnny Appleseed Day. Now, he might seem fictional, but he's actually a real guy. Born John Chapman in 1774, the nomad often walked barefoot across the nation and the frontier, planting trees and pears. Now, March 11th is National Johnny Appleseed Day because it's during the planting season. It's also celebrated on his birthday, September 26th. Fun fact, the apples he planted were too bitter to eat. Instead, they were used to make cider, a safe alternative to drinking water on the frontier. You can mark the day by enjoying an apple, cider, or maybe some hard cider. Post that on social media with the hashtag National Johnny Appleseed Day. Mm -mm -mm. I am a cider fanatic, Dakota. I absolutely love it, and mm -hmm. uh, nobody else in my family really too big on it, so more for me. I don't, well, I mean, I don't really mind cider. I'm more of an apple juice yeah. kind of person. But uh, speaking of Johnny Appleseed, here's a little trivia for you. Did you know? that Apple actually uses the name Johnny Appleseed for some of their default stuff. Really? Yeah, it's huh. like in some of the old icons in Mac OS, there used to be a little text written on one of the icons and it said Johnny Appleseed. So Apple often uses that name Right, just like a John stock. Doe type of thing. Yeah, yeah just to fill and it in. And also, hmm. Apple also uses cool. the Appleseed name for their public beta program. It's officially called the Appleseed program. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's a, a, a cool uh, connection to mm -hmm. Apple. When you think of Apple, you obviously think of the fruit, right? Right. I mean, I mean, a lot of people think of Apple seed. Let us know what you think about this and more in the comments below. A good day to celebrate, nevertheless, outside, uh, at least this afternoon until tonight. I know you mentioned some, some rain showers around the way, but mm -hmm. really, that's what uh, Western New Yorkers all about, I think, in the end, is, is the fact that... Uh, Spring, for now, feels good, but uh, you never know. It's March, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's kind of like what I posted on social media yesterday. You know, your free trial of spring is gone. <laughs> right. It's going to expire so soon. It's, yeah. So uh, you'll have to pay twenty nine ninety nine per month if you want spring back. One no, thing kidding. I wanted to show uh, real quick yes. before we get to final. I'm not sure if we have that pulled up. I have it on my desktop here in the studio control room, um, if that helps at all. But I have a picture of uh, uh, Tata, 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 Tata. Okay, there we go. So, so obviously, obviously we're echoing, echoing for some reason. reason. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's not that's good. good. It's because I have the, the screen. You know what? They don't want us to show this picture. This that's what right. it is. All right, so here's the picture. So now that you can hear us again. And uh, these two, I'm dog sitting these guys. And we went out on the patio yesterday and had uh, some kibble. I mean, I didn't eat any kibble. They ate the kibble. But, uh, yeah, it was a great day for it. So if you were out there, as Dakota always <laughs> mentioned, send us your, send us your photos. Uh, Hunter WX, you can tweet it directly to him. He's the photo master. He'll put them up. Um, so this was my slice of heaven yesterday. But tonight, Dakota, not a good night to be on the patio. Yeah. Well, unless you have one of those retractable patty, those retractable arms. Yeah, protect yourself. 33 to 40 tonight, scattered showers, maybe some downpours, and don't be surprised if you hear a couple rumbles of thunder, and then it should clear out later tonight and tomorrow, Justin. All right, Dakota, thank you. That's going to do it for us. Of course, news continues 24-7 at WNYNewsNow.com and on our mobile app. If you haven't downloaded it yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Download it right now. It's free. Just search WNY News Now. Subscribe to Breaking News. Push notifications. We'll keep you in the know. Leave you with his live look over Lakewood and the old Wally world in the background. Dakota and I are back tomorrow. Have a great day.